My role here today is to project manage and to get this property uh, constructed. We've got a six stage um, process we're going through. We started back in January this year. Um, so this is the second stage we're going through. First stage was key lining, the pole 100 acres. We've got uh, a 3,000 acre property. Uh, this 100 acres we've been uh, given to by the client and they're willing to help us out by uh, constructing this into a regenerative and sustainable piece of land that we can um, hopefully improve over time. The property, we've got a sort of a south facing aspect here. Um, it's a pretty degraded cattle property. It's been in this family, the family working for for around about um, 30 years. Uh, and ever since then it's been through a, s a series of, um, of droughts and, and some hard times. So what we're trying to do now is just do some simple remediation work um, by putting swales and trees in to combat that and to hopefully um, hold some moisture in the ground and build some carbon at the same time. In this 100 acres we've got about 2.2 kilometres of swales going in so we've done swale one this morning. Uh, it's worked out quite well and behind me the guys are actually joining swale one into the dam. So by the time we, uh, this, this paddock gets to a stage where we've got some surface runoff, this swale actually help catch that water and then that water will be held in the swale. Then whatever's left over will actually head back into the dam. Once the dam's full, it'll then back flood this swale and about 20 metres that way will be a level sort of spillway. So basically that'll come off the dam, it'll back flood into the swale and then we'll put the water back across a drier part of the paddock as opposed to running at the bottom of the dam. We'll put it out a bit, bit further and hopefully get some more hydration that way. Then we'll cover crop this. Fleur's just been through this morning, cover crop the whole swale right from top to bottom. Once it dam's finished, we'll go through and cover crop that with just a, a mixture of ryegrass, um, coxfoot and some clovers. Then what we'll do in about a day or two, we'll go through with some straw on the back of a um, forage feeder and broadcast straw over the top of this. And what that'll give us is some protection from the oxidising sun. Um, sun oxidises carbon out of the soil. So what we'll do, cover that over. It's going to give us a nice little layer you know, basically like a bit of a duna cover really on, the, on this bit of swale and the grasses and things will grow back after that. Then once we've done that, this swale will be planted out with about 280 trees and then the dam wall eventually in stage three or four, we're gonna put some bamboo on the dam wall. What that's gonna do is actually hold that dam wall together and that dam will then be fenced off as the swales will be fenced off from any cattle, any livestock. Compaction on the swale wall is not what we want. We want a very soft wall so that when the water hits this swale, fills up, it actually percolates down through the ground and gets absorbed by the ground as opposed to sitting in here like a dam. And with the dam wall over the years, the cattle being on it and, and lots of rain, intense rain, it's actually washed in that dam wall so, and roaded it away. So what we're gonna do now, the guys in the grade are just reshaping that and the excavator driver is just sort of just doing a few tweaks to that too at the same time to, um, to help that out. This design is a design we've we come up with based on permaculture design and permaculture principles. We're using a few other techniques like um, a technique developed by PA Yeomans with uh, key line ploughing, we're doing that. We're also going to incorporate uh, compost teas into this too so we can actually inoculate the ground. This being a pretty degraded uh, cow paddock over the years has sort of been pushed to the limit where soil carbon's at a very, very minimum and the land's been pushed to, to produce good cattle but hopefully with the inclusion of these swales. So the swales are water harvesting ditches on contour, but we're also, also gonna to do too is these will actually become fertility catchers. So they'll catch fertility, hold fertility, and disperse it evenly across the landscape. So we're gonna plant a series of trees through these, these swales, and they'll be pioneer species first. So those, they'll be quick fix, uh, nitrogen fixing trees, um, and they'll, they'll cycle through maybe eight year, eight year sort of lifespan. And then once we've done that, we'll come through and put other fertility building trees there'll be oaks and you know some ornamental things that drop leaves and create fertility quite quite well. So we're designing it uh, with water access and structures in mind, so we're looking at all those too. We're taking into consideration some holistic management, uh, which involves looking at uh, timed grazing and cell grazing. And, uh, and, and based around that, this, is, this paddock being 100 acres is only 3% of the property. So this is a 3,000 acre property. On a large scale, doing this sort of work over the 3,000 acres would be not cost effective, but what we're trying to do is to demonstrate here to the client. And just even this first, this first three months, we've done the key lining now, and the grass had been eaten down to nothing, and even had a, quite a good season. But now with a bit of key line, we've broken those compaction layers, taken that anaerobic layer out, and got some oxygen and, um, and sunlight down those cracks. That the grass is, you know, three, four foot high now. We're getting diversity of other species coming back that weren't here before, the clovers, 
various other grasses that have come back just through one simple ripping. The variety of species we've got up there are all sort of local endemic, um, fast growing nitrogen fixing trees. We'll also include in the mix there a few shrubby type things for to introduce things like bees and other sorts of animals like birds and things that can come in and, and, and also get protection in those sort of species. So what we're using them is to basically get a canopy up like a forest does, get this canopy up of fast nitrogen fixing trees and then maybe three or four years later what we're going to do is start planting out with our our, you know, our, our successional plants, the ones we're going to want there in the end of the, at the end of the day. So those nitrogen fixing species will then end up, um, once fertility starts to build, they'll actually die out. And what will happen then, uh, they'll actually release their nitrogen once they've, they've died out. It's a square paddock, um, so what we're doing is planting uh, shelter belts right around the edge. Um, if this had been a broad acre, say the whole property, what we would have done, we wouldn't have planted wind breaks, we would, what we would have done is use the actual swales, because when the swales intersect the property, they're actually giving protection on different angles. So you don't really need to go and plant this, but for the, for the exercise here, square paddock, we've got some harsh west, southwesterly winds that come through in winter, and also uh, we've got north, northerly winds coming through in summer, so um, uh, we're gonna try and protect those areas initially. Uh, as far as trees go on this property, there's not a lot. If we had to put a percentage figure on it, I would say probably 1% of the whole 3,000 acres is maybe trees, even less than that. What we're trying to do is at least to give the cattle some protection and, um, and then from that, I think they'll, uh, they'll see some benefits from that too.